Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, tonight, I'm continuing the study of the book of John. I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, uh, beginning with uh, chapter 7, verse 1. And I'll see how far I can get in an hour. Uh, if you did not see the previous studies on John, uh, they are uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. All right, beginning with chapter 7, verse 1 in the KJV first. It says, After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Uh, now, they sought to kill him because of his claims. Um, it's going to go into this in more detail, but he made some claims that uh, they, the Jews uh, understood to be clearly uh, claims of deity, claims that he is God, and uh, that, if it was not true and they didn't believe it, uh, that would be blasphemy. So they felt that uh, blasphemy that way was worthy of a sentence of death, and they wanted to kill him. And so he had to avoid them, at least for a while, because this was not his time. Uh, he, he, he knew, and uh, the Bible foretold that, you know, there was a particular time and place where he was going to die, in a particular manner he would die, and he would be dying for our sins in that way. Let me see. I think I heard somebody. It's Neo. Oh, hey, Neo. How are you doing? What's up? Uh, John chapter 7, verse 1. I just read it. How are you doing? Good. Uh, yeah, I've been following you here and there. Yeah, okay. All right. So um, I'll read the first verse one more time in the KJV. And I, I already talked about it, but let's see if you have anything to say about it. It says, uh, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in Jewry, uh, because the Jews sought to kill him. I'll read it in the Amplified, too. After this, Jesus walked from place to place in Galilee, for he would not walk in Judea, because the Jews were seeking to kill him. And I mentioned how they they wanted to kill him because he, he, he clearly was claiming to be God, and uh, they considered that blasphemy. Yeah, that was kind of a funny thing in my life that happened. Uh, of course, I wasn't trying to be exactly like Jesus or anything, but, you know, sell your possessions, and uh, you cannot be a prophet in your own town. If you remember those scriptures that he was in. Um, I think that's where that points to, is like the reason Jesus traveled around is because he was trying to spread the message as much as possible. And, uh, and being in my own hometown, there was only so much I could do. There's only so many people I could reach. Um, and moving to the next town um, kind of helped me reach out to more people that I would have never met before. You know, so that, I think that's the reason Jesus moved around us, is to more spread the message around more than anything. Not because these people hated him. Uh, it was already preordained that these people were going to hate him anyway. You know, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> I hate to use the word preordained, but of course they're not going to accept the message. You know, so. Okay. Well, it is. It is stated that uh, he would. Uh, he he stated that a prophet is not respected in his hometown, and and that is a fact. I've experienced that too. I mean, if. If anybody is listening now, if you've ever had the experience of uh, trying to tell your own closest family members and friends about Jesus and teach them something, sometimes uh, it's not very well received because uh, it's too close to home. You, you don't have their respect. They don't think of you as some authority in, on uh, the Bible and Christianity. Uh, so therefore, maybe they're going to have to hear it from somebody else. Uh, so I've, I've experienced that, but over the years, uh, most people I know have grown to respect me because they know that I've continued for 29 years studying the Bible and teaching the Bible, and and uh, because of that, uh, eventually they grow to respect what you have to say. So uh, I know I'm not surprised that you've experienced that, but in this case, the verse clearly states 
that the reason he's moving around is to avoid being killed. I'll go to verse two. I don't. I don't think they could kill him anyway because it wasn't his time. <laughs> you know. So. Well, they couldn't kill him because he was doing this to prevent it. But uh, I, I see your point. But it does. It does say after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. It also talks about you know not being his time. So he was doing this to avoid being killed. Uh, they wanted to. Uh, throw him over a cliff. They wanted to stone him. Uh, there's a couple of different times this is mentioned. Uh, so where, would they have been able to? Well, no, because we know the we know the end of the story. We know that uh, uh, once the prophecy is written, it's 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 uh, the future in advance. So we know they're not going to kill him. We know he's going to eventually be killed on the cross. So they, in that way, they couldn't kill him. But we also have to accept that he was doing this to avoid being killed. It says. Um, now, verse 2 says, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Uh, and then they amplified it. says, now the Jewish feast of the tab tabernacles, that's also called booths, was approaching. I don't know what that t feast is that much. Let me see if there's a footnote. Oh, yeah, okay. There's a footnote here in the amplified. Let me see what it says. Um this important seven-day feast held in October celebrated the, the harvest, the in-gathering. Devout Jews spent the week living outside in booths or tents made of tree branches. It was the most popular of the three great Jewish festivals, that of being Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. Hmm, okay. Um, then I'll go on to, in uh, the KJV. It says that in verse 3, His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Uh, and I'll read the next verse. It's connected. It says, For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to, know, to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Um for neither did his brethren believe in him. Now, I think this is talking about brethren uh, in the sense that it was his family members, his brothers. We know that he had James and Jude for sure, and uh, he may have had other brothers that are not mentioned. So uh, how do you, let me, let me get your reaction, and then I'll read it in the Amplified. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely uh, definitely taken into consideration. When they say brethren, are they talking about people of that time, or are they talking about people now? And I think a lot of people um, mistake who they're exactly talking about. They're, they, they, brethren, the followers, are they talking about followers now, then or followers now? Um, they could be talking about all followers. Or they could be talking about brethren as in Jesus' actual brethren, as in bloodline. Yes. And sometimes when we see the word brethren, it's it's really just talking specifically about they're, they're considered brothers because they're fellow Jews, the, the, the brethren being the Jewish people. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. It, uh, it could have various uh, meanings. Let me see how it's phrased in the Amplified. Uh, it says, um, so his brother said to him, uh, leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples there may also see the works that you do. No one does anything in secret when he wants to be known publicly. If you must do these things, show yourself openly to the world and make yourself known. For not even his brothers believed in him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty clear that this is his, actually his brothers. You know, James... Uh, uh, is well known for the uh, in the resurrection appearances. Jesus appeared to five hundred people. He appeared to uh, the the apostles. Uh, he appeared to his brother James. It says in First Corinthians fifteen, uh, and then James, of course, became an apostle. But uh, um, it's interesting how his brothers did not believe in him at, at least at this point now we know that eventually james and jude uh, if if the author of the book of james is is jesus's brother as many people believe uh, then 
And then uh, he became a believer, at least in a certain way. Uh, I, I, I could go for another couple of hours talking about James and what he wrote in his book and, and my issues with that, but I don't want to get too sidetracked. But um, And then Jude, he wrote his own epistle, Jude, and he that is credited to being a Jude, the brother of Jesus. Um, but at least at this point in time, they didn't believe his claims. And uh, but they were telling him to go out and show what he does. Uh, everybody do, don't do things in secret. Go okay. out and let everybody know what you're doing. So in, in a way, it seemed like kind of a little bit of a contradiction. I'm not making a lot of sense of it. Yeah, they're that's saying, what I was saying the, uh, about John. John is, is one of the only people that really did believe him and him in that way. Yeah, baptize him. Yeah. Well, the um, the apostles believed in him. Uh, you know, John John called him the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, John the Baptist. Um, and then we know that Peter, uh, Andrew, uh, James, and John, uh, uh, Philip, they all made announcements that he's the Christ, the Son of God. Uh, it's just this other James, uh, the, the James I referenced a minute ago, is uh, the brother of. Uh, uh, John, John and James were brothers. Peter and Andrew were brothers. So these apostles, they all, they did believe him. Uh, these claims that he is the the son of son of God, uh, but his brother James, at this point at least, uh, they're not uh, they're not recognized this, and they're not believing it according to that verse there. Uh, let me read a little further. It says, uh, verse six. Then Jesus said unto them. My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Uh, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Uh, go, ye, uh, go ye unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet come, not yet full come. Um. So that's his answer to his brothers, telling him to go out and uh, don't do things, all these things in such to such small audiences. It's almost like you're doing them in secret. Go to Jerusalem. Go to, uh, to tell all the Jews if if you're if you're who you say you are, then you shouldn't like you should go ahead and tell them, tell everybody. And he says, "My time has not yet come." So, what's your response to that? That's really funny the way that this is worded. There's a lot of people trying to tell each other about the. You know, imagine trying to be in that position and trying to tell people that Jesus is here to die for all of us, for all of our sins, and be one of the apostles. And who's going to believe you? Who's going to follow you? Who's going to who's going to be with you? You know, and that, I don't think that's the point. But you know, that was he's trying to say. You know, tell them all. Tell them that I, this is this is what the whole reason that I'm here for. I'm here to, to, for this trial that's coming up. The things that are going to go on from now on, but I'm going to die for all of you and all of your sins. You know, nobody believed it. It's hard to believe. Imagine somebody saying that now. Thankfully, Jesus already did that. You know, we don't have to have that. <laughs> so, but you know, it'd be hard to believe, wouldn't it? You know. Well. Um... He, he already has performed some miracles. And I, I've talked about this before, but when he fed the thousands and, and, uh, and uh, when he healed people, these were things um, that were loving things to do. But the real, the primary reason for doing these miracles was these signs of uh, demonstrating who he is. And... Uh, so the, the, the miracles uh, were already happening and people were believing. He did have a lot of disciples, but what, at the very end of chapter 6, you saw that most of the disciples, uh, differentiating between apostles and disciples, because I think at this point we haven't seen the naming of the 12 apostles. Yeah, so, and he had a lot of enemies too, though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why he said they wanted to kill him. <laughs> he, he, had, he was kind of like laying low because they wanted to kill him. 
uh, and his, his time has not yet come. He knows if he does go start preaching publicly, especially in Jerusalem, that, it's, that they're going to want to kill him over, over his, what his claims are. And he, he knows that it's not the right time yet. Uh, so he's laying low, and his brothers are probably Jude and James. And if he has other brothers, maybe they're all saying, go out. Hey, if you're say you, or who you say you are and you can do all these miracles, go do them where everybody can see you. And so Jesus say, no, I, uh, it's not my time yet. And he says it's not my time, not telling them that it's not my time to die. Uh, yeah, because that's the best miracle he could have gave him was resurrection. And he already did it through Lazarus. He told them through Lazarus that that's what, exactly what he was going to do. He was going to do what he did to Lazarus. Well, at this point in, in John's account, uh, Lazarus hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. That's but what with, I'm saying. Uh, uh, it does take the bodily resurrection of Jesus for James, and I'm supposing that the same thing happened. Jude probably wasn't a believer until the resurrection either. But it took the resurrection and the post-resurrection appearance of Jesus to James to make them believe. Um, but most of the people who were following him at that time, at the end of chapter 6, most of them left him. And it was because um, he was speaking in spiritual language, and they took him literally, and they thought, well, you're telling us to be a cannibal. You want us to eat your flesh and drink your blood? And uh, he said, I'm, they don't, don't you understand? And I'm speaking in spiritual language. They didn't get it. So most of them left him at the end of the last chapter. Uh, but so he still got followers. But uh, uh, let, me, let me go on here. Um, um, Okay, so he says, the world hate cannot hate you, but it hateth me because I, I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Um, he said, tell us, his, he's talking back to his brothers. Oh, I want to read that in the Amplified. I didn't see how they phrased it. Um, uh, verse 6, so Jesus said to them, my time is not yet come, but any time is right for you. The world cannot hate you since uh, you are part of it, but it does hate me because I denounce it and testify that its deeds are evil. Go up to the feast yourselves. I'm not going to, I'm not going up to this feast because my time has not yet come. Uh, and then verse nine, having said these things to them, he stayed behind in Galilee. So uh, I think uh, the phrasing in- uh, I'm sorry for sidetracking you, by the way, go ahead. Yeah, the phrasing in the Amplified uh, uh, makes it really quite clear. Uh, I'm going to go on unless you want to say anything further about that. Uh, do you mind if Jerry Rose comes in? I'm sorry. Who who is Jerry Rose? Are they? Uh, do they uh, read the rules and the the statement of faith and their adherence to all of it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Jerry is probably on. Everybody you know loves Jerry Rose. I can't believe you haven't met him yet. He is probably the most stand-up. He's in the Army, and he's, he's the most best Christian I've ever met on here. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'll be right here. Here. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, you know Luke, don't you, or no? I may have met him once before. Can't remember, though. <laughs> How you doing, Luke? Going through a Bible study uh, and all that stuff. Yeah, we're... Oh, okay. um, I'm doing, this is a uh, nightly Bible study I do uh, live at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, you're in what time zone, you guys? I forgot. You're, I'm in Pacific time. Oh, Jerry Rose is Pacific, but Neo is what? You're Eastern, aren't you? Neo, you're Eastern time? Yes, Eastern. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this, I do this live nightly at 7 p.m. Pacific for an hour. And on a variety of subjects, we're working our way through the book of John. We're in uh, chapter 7, and we're, uh, let me see, I just finished reading up through verse 9. So there, if you have your Bible handy, you can take a look at that. But uh, Brother Neo has uh, endorsed you. I don't, I don't uh, permit people to come into the Hangout unless they uh, agree to these core doctrines of Christianity that I post on the invitation. And he says, you're good to go with that. Well, all right. If he says so, <laughs> then I'll agree. <laughs> okay. 
Now let's continue on in the study here. I'm going to read. I re, I'm a KJV firstist. By the so way, look, uh, uh, Jerry is blocked or muted or something. I don't know what it is. So maybe you have to do something there. Can you not hear me, brother? Yeah. Okay. All right. There you are. Uh, yeah. There you are. There you are. Yep. I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, All right. Cool. Uh, do you? I guess that that previous things he said uh, were not uh, uh, video audio. Um, uh, visible or audio to anybody. I uh, I set up the show so that no one can get visible until I approve them. I forgot to approve you there. <laughs> Sorry. But you're on. Your uh, your video and your audio is, is uh, available for everybody to see now. So let me ask you, uh, Brother Jerry Rose, uh, introduce yourself as in, in 30 or 60 seconds, if you will. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, thank you, uh, Brother Luke, for you know, let me be here. Uh, about me, I guess I'd just say that uh, I love the Lord Jesus, man. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, and I spend most of my time online just, uh, you know, preaching the Word of God. You know, so I love the Lord Jesus and I uh, love my brethren that also love the Lord Jesus. <laughs> That's all I can say about myself for now, I guess. All right. Well, that's a good start. I'm glad to meet you. And uh, well, I'll, I'll contend for Brother Jerry and Brother Luke are pretty much on the same level here uh, when it comes to the gospel of grace. And I hear, whenever I hear Brother Jerry say the things that he does, I hear you echo some of the things he says. Because I knew Brother Jerry before I knew you. So Brother Luke and Brother Jerry are similar in the gospel of grace to me personally that's what i'm saying now yeah. all right very good uh let's continue with the study now john chapter one i mean chapter uh, seven we're on verse 10 now uh, i'm a kjv firstist i read it in the kjv first and then i like to look at it in the amplified because it, it amplifies and like basically what we're doing in our conversation aren't we just amplifying it and discussing it so verse 9 says, When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it, but as, as it were, in secret. Uh, so I'll stop there. That's verse 9 and verse 10. Um, Brother uh, Neil, you've, you've been with us since verse 1, so I'll ask you to comment first on that. Verse 9, uh, verse 9, 7, 9, we're at John 7, 9, yep. Uh, okay. Uh, he exhorted them to go up to the feast uh, and told them that he should not go yet, and the reason of it, he abode still in Galilee and went up not uh, with his brethren, nor at the at at all the present, showing hereby a firmness and resolution of mind, not using likeness of speech and his words not being yea and nay, but all of a peace and by which he abode. So when he says, <clears throat> to me this is what it means, when he said, uh, he had said these words unto them, and he abode still in Galilee, and then in verse 10, uh, they say, um, but when his brethren were gone up, then he went also up unto the feast, but not openly, but as it were in secret. See, God doesn't really keep secrets. The only reason that Jesus needed to be secret is because the people at the time didn't understand the, the thing that he was going to do. At the time, the reason he had to do secret things is so that the Pharisees at the time didn't try to kill him before his message, before his work was done. So I think the reason that Jesus did things in secret was because he was trying to keep the, um, the, uh, the Pharisees from, from gaining attention to him, basically. And yeah, then, if we look at the context of the of the first ten verses there, I mean, he says uh, we we understand that 
uh, his brothers, and this is not the, the, the brethren that are the Jewish people, this is not the brethren that are, let's say, disciples, these are his actual brothers, probably James and Jude, they're telling him, go, go, perform your miracles in Jerusalem where they can all see you, you know, so that don't do things in secret, but they didn't believe in him, it says. And he's, and he's saying, no, it's time, not time for him to do it, but he's thinking, it's because I can't go there because they'll, they want to kill me and it's not the right time. So now we get to the point where his brothers go, go up there and he stays behind, but he secretly follows him and goes into there, but he's, he's entering Jerusalem in secret. And it's because, as you said, uh, if, he, if he goes there, you know, it's, uh, he, he knows the prophecy that, that when and how uh, everything's going to play out. And this is uh, this will throw things off if they start. See, they they try to proclaim him king, and they uh, try to uh, like they do at the uh, when he enters the donkey donk on the donkey, and they uh, they say this is Hosanna. Uh, they're proclaiming him king, and that's he wants to avoid all that happening prematurely. Uh, let me get uh, Brother Jerry's uh, comments on this so far. Okay, or not? I'll just go on taking then. Care of his, uh, taking care of something uh, back there. Oh, yeah, hey, my bad. I thought I, I was there. Add real quick before Jerry goes up, to be humble instead of prideful in God, to teach lessons to the apostles, to not be hasty. So don't go out there and try to, like, you know, prove all the miracles that you can do. You shouldn't have to prove miracles because the society demands you to. You know what I'm saying? Well, whenever they demanded a miracle, uh, there's two times that I can recall they demanded a sign from Jesus. Early in chapter 1, uh, they demanded a sign, and he said, well, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And they said, well, it took 40 years to build a temple. You, you can rebuild it in three days? Are you crazy? And then, but he, it says that he was referencing his, his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. So that was a sign that he uh, he would it was promising, and then it's going to happen in the future chapters again where they demand a sign, and he says the only sign I'll give you. And by the when they demand the sign the second time here, I don't know how much time's passed. Probably probably three years, and they're demanding a sign after he's already done a plethora of of miracles, and now they demand a sign to back up his claims. And he said, uh, the only sign I'll give you is the sign of Jonah, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Again, he's talking about his death, burial, and resurrection as being the sign that proves his claims. And so uh, he does a lot of signs, but when he's, when he's demanded to do a sign, he refuses to do one, except reference he's going to, uh, you know, death, reference his his future death, burial, and resurrection. All right. Before I go on, anything to say about all that? I uh, sorry, I was trying to say some before. I guess I was still muted. But uh, Brother Luke, uh, what chapter are we in again? John seven ten. Okay, John chapter 7. It's talking about when Jesus um, is doing things in secret, and I said that uh, what br uh, Brother Luke was talking about, you know, um, to me it, it, what it is exactly what he said. You know, but in, in a certain point, Jesus is talking about don't be hasty. Don't go out there trying to prove you're prideful. Don't be prideful about what you're – There's you don't have to be secret, but you don't have to be prideful. You don't have to go out there and pride and, and say, I'm going to save the world. You, know? <laughs> you can do that in secret without telling anybody about it. Well, you know, when, when we read a verse, uh, there's various applications. One is a, a historical, literal application where you're saying, this is what was happening at the time, and this is what it meant right at the time. And then you also have a uh, maybe... A spiritual application 
where it has a double meaning and there's a, a, a like when Jesus talked about eating his flesh and his drinking his blood they were taking it literally but he said this is meant to be taken spiritually and, and then there's also a personal application based upon each readers uh, lives experiences and, and so here you are brother Neil you're explaining it and you see something in it that I, I wouldn't have thought of in that way yeah, and, yeah. and other maybe some other people wouldn't have thought of that but to you it, 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 you you had a personal application that that can be valid but but we cannot say your personal application is thus saith the Lord we can say that that's what you got out of it that's something you learned from it oh yeah that's I, I, that's something you see in it that maybe the rest of us didn't see, but I can see your point, and I can see how a person can learn that lesson from the way you stated it. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to wreck your point. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, no, you didn't wreck the point. You didn't wreck the point at all. I was just saying that that, that was a personal application of the verse, and it's a valid application. Okay, Brother Jerry, what do you say? Oh, yeah. You know, one thing I see in here is like... Uh, Jesus was led of the Spirit, right? Because we know that Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. He was dro driven by the Spirit, you know, and he he did as you know the Father has al had always bid him to. You know, he said, he, "I always do those things which please my Father." And you look at his brethren, right? You see two. You see a spiritual man, and then you see the carnal man, because his brethren did not yet believe in him, you know. And he said, "Your time is always ready." And you know what I, what that means to me, what I see, is like um, the worldly man, you know, the man of the world. His time is always ready. You know, he can just do whatever he wants to do. But us, you know, we're, we sh we're led of the Spirit because, as Paul said, you know, they that are led of the Spirit, you know, are the sons of God, just as Jesus was. And, you know, also it says in First John, you know, that... Um, he that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. And you find it is like our time is determined by the Spirit of God. And it's not like the world. You know, the world's time is always at hand. That's what he told his brethren, you know. He said, go up to the feast. You know, he said, for my time is not yet come. You know, he said, I go not up unto this feast. Uh, go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. You know, it just shows a difference in uh, difference in timing, and it just a difference in the walk between the spiritual and the carnal. You know, that's what I see there. Well, um, okay, I want to re respond to that, but first, let me just say, since uh, you're you're new to this, and Neil also, you're probably f forgetting to do this, uh, because of the uh, feedback that we get. Make sure you mute your microphone when someone else is talking. And, and oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm otherwise, the, the, the audio quality will not be that good. I am so sorry. I did not know that I was on mute. That's all right. But let me just say that after listening to Brother Neil, and then after listening uh, to Brother Jerry, basically you are making the same point that I didn't really see originally. And I, I think that... Uh, uh, now I learned something about that that I missed when I originally read it. So I think your point is well taken about, uh, yeah, their time is, uh, in, they can go any time because, the, you know, they're not on the same schedule as he is. He's on a schedule that's preordained through prophecy, and it's not time for him to go there, but they can go do it any time. They can rush into things. He can't rush into things and, and, and uh, that are going to offset in any way the the plans that we are laid out with, through prophecy, so yeah, and I can see now how Brother Neil was right on track, and I didn't see it until Brother Jerry also expounded on it. So thank you. Uh, let me go on. And who is this lady here? Oh, Lindsay. If I remember correctly, Lindsay is not a believer. Let me ask her uh, for a second here. Uh, hello, Lindsay. Are are you a believer? Um, I don't know. Well, I'm going to just keep you on private then, and you can listen, but this is... Uh, this well, is, this is the only thing. you know, why do you send me hangouts that I can't talk in? Oh, for... 
Okay. All right. She should have read the rules. The, the rules I post is that don't click on the link, don't join the Hangout unless you read the rules and, and, uh, uh, and you believe in the core doctrines of Christianity. This is a fellowship for believers. It's not a place for random people to come in and just... Uh, so you're welcome to listen you know, now or after the video is uploaded, but it, the only participants are, are believers. That's the way I do it. Um, Okay, so let's uh, let's move on here. Uh, and so back to the KJV, it says in verse 11, Then the Jews sought him at the feast uh, and said, Where is he? Uh, and there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. And uh, for some said, He is a good man. Others say, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit, no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. All right, so let me ask either one of you to comment on those first. Well, you know, uh, I think that just shows, you know, how Jesus, he does divide, you know, amongst men. You know, some said he was good. Others said, you know, he deceives them. And, uh, you know, it goes back to what Jesus said, you know. He said, think, he said it interestingly, you know, enough. He said, think not that I am come bring, come to bring peace upon the earth. He said, nay, you know, but a sword, you know, because he, he does divide. And, uh, you know, even in that, uh, what Jesus said about when the Son of Man comes into his kingdom, you know, he would set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And, uh, you know, in this dark world we live in, there are many deceivers and many false prophets out there. But, you know, Jesus reveals all things to be what they are, you know, the truth. And I think that's something we can see there. All right. Uh, Brother Jared, do you have a, a duck in your, living in your house with you? <laughs> a duck? <laughs> I, I, it sounds like a duck squeaking in the background. Oh, no, no, that's, that's me messaging Lindsay. I'm trying to calm her down. Um, All right. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about her on air, but um, okay. she's somebody I'm trying to reach out to is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I, I think that's, a, that's an important point to understand. The question, that, that you do get a, um, a picture of the, how the name Jesus divides uh, it says, um, uh, some said he is a good man, others say nay, but he deceiveth the people. Um, and that's the question that uh, everybody has to eventually ask and answer. You know, when Jesus asked his apostles, this will be coming up in later chapters, when he, he says, who do, who do you say that I am? And, and how we answer that question will determine our eternity. So... Um, he does uh, cause division, and it says that father and son will divide over him, hus husband and wife, um, over who he is, and so this is just another uh, picture of it. But I'm I'm not convinced that any of these people are really believers at, uh, in this particular verse here. Some say he's a good man. See, I mean, you could be, uh, you can believe that today. If you ask people who Jesus is, well, he was a real good man. He was a great moral teacher. <laughs> but that's not what we, how we want to uh, understand uh, the identity of Jesus. Jesus is eternal God Almighty, who is manifest in the flesh as the Son of God, so that he could die for our sins and uh, be our Savior. Uh, so this is, this is who we need to understand and, and, and believe about Jesus, not that he is a good man. Uh, I'm going to, let me read that in the Amplified. Um, let me see, in the Amplified, verse 11. Uh, so the Jews kept looking for him at the feast and asking, where is he? There are a lot of whispers, uh, whispered discussion and murmuring among the crowds about him. Some were saying, he is a good man. Others said, no, on the, other, on the contrary, he misleads the people, giving them false ideas. Yet no one was speaking out openly and freely about him for fear of the leaders of the Jews. At this point, uh, from the, the verse in 
let me see, it was verse, uh, verse 1, it's already stated here, the Jews sought to kill him. Um, so I guess the people were aware, not only did Jesus know, but, but these people were aware, they better be afraid if they say the wrong thing about Jesus uh, openly, and the Jews know, if they're a supporter of Jesus or a believer in Jesus, then uh, they might be in jeopardy uh, along with Jesus. Um, okay, anything to say about that, Jerry? Oh, yeah, I would say, you know, it's another contrast, I believe, in there, you know, of spiritual and, and carnal again, because, you know, there is division among the people, and we know that divisions come from, you know, as Paul told the Corinthians, you know, some say, you know, I'm of Paulus, I am of Paul, I am of Christ, you know, is Christ divided, you know, but he says now there be, now there's divisions among you, you know, he says, are you not carnal? and walk as men, and, you know, you see these, see these men here, the people, you know, having not yet received the Holy Ghost, and realizing that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, you know, but this, these are the things that flesh and blood would reveal to you, you know, he's a good man, or he's a deceiver, man's judgment of who Jesus is, because they could only perceive Jesus after the flesh, you know, and, um, yeah, I mean that's 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 very true, and that I think about Peter, you know, when he when he confessed that he was that he is the Christ, you know, the Son of the Living God. And I remember what Jesus said to him, you know, he says, uh, "Flesh and blood have and I revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven." You know, so the things that man naturally knows, and being carnal like that, Jesus will divide, you know, and. Uh, it's interesting, though, like a good man. <laughs> and I've also reminded of what Jesus told the, the rich, young, rich young man, you know, he said, why call us down be good? He said, there is none good, but one, that is God. And, you know, Jesus is, you know, truly, because he is that one, that is God. Well, anyway, some things I can get about there. All right. Um... Well, let me ask you a question then, since we're on this subject of this, uh, the question, who do you say that I am? Uh, I've thought about this a lot, and I've asked a lot of people, and nobody's been able to give me a, an answer that, uh, that was helpful. And I'll kind of put you on the spot, and maybe you, maybe you can help me with this. Um, at this point, already in the book of John, is chapter 7, in the first six chapters, probably I could think of a, a half dozen times where various people have referenced Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's already been stated over and over again by John the Baptist and Andrew and Philip and Peter and on and on. And, and, uh, uh, and yet, a point coming up, we haven't reached it yet, where Jesus sends the, the uh, disciples out to preach and when they come back, he asks them, well, who are the people saying that I am? And they say, well, you're, you're this prophet or you're that prophet. And he says, well, but who do you say that I am? And then Peter, as usual, is the first to speak. He says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, as you, as you said, Brother Jerry, well, you didn't get this on your own. For you didn't hear it from a man. You, you, you got this from uh, the Spirit. And is revealed, God has revealed it to you. <clears throat> and then a really big deal is made about this, and Roman Catholicism rests on this claim that this is the event that makes Peter the first pope, the, 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 uh, the leader of the, the church as a whole, because he says that he's the rock, and on the rock he will build his, build his church, and he has the keys to heaven and hell. So because of that, it's made such a big deal. And yet, uh, we know that the rock in that section of verses is really referencing the claim. The claim that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the rock that the church will be built upon, that foundation. Not this person, Peter. Uh, but my question, Brother Jerry, is have you ever thought about why this is made into such a big event uh, that Peter states this, 
you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And yet before that, John the Baptist already declared it. Andrew, Peter before, others. It's been, it's been stated numerous times before then. I, I'm just, I've always been puzzled by that. Do you, do you have any thoughts? Oh, well, my thought is, is that uh, the scripture, I don't believe the scripture really indicates that Peter was the first ever to confess that. I mean, because the father also showed John the Baptist that he was the Christ, right? Because he said that the one who sent him to baptize told him, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit of God descending, you know, that is he. So obviously God showed John the Baptist that too. But I believe that uh, it specifically points out that interaction with Peter just for, for our learning, you know, for our spiritual doctrine. Because we're thinking of this man Peter who later on, you know, tried to stop Jesus from going on to the cross. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, so I think it's all just for our learning in examining what the scriptures say about Peter and his relationship with the Lord. You know, and all the, there are a few apostles in there, you know, that give us a lot of details about, and there are some that the scriptures don't. But, uh, you know, the Holy Ghost brought these things to their remembrance while they were writing these things for our learning, to deliver the doctrine of Christ. And, uh, you know, so that's what I say. I say, Peter, I mean, I know why a lot of people may think that way, that, you know, Peter was the first ever to confess it, but I don't think that, as you said, you know, the scriptures don't really lay it out like that. And I think that would be uh, erroneous to believe. But I would say in this instance, you know, the important thing is to understand that uh, God himself has to reveal to you Jesus Christ and give you the revelation of Jesus Christ. If God doesn't reveal it to you, nobody will. You know, you might hear it, you know, but it's just, it's not real. And it's, it, it's not in your heart, you know, to where you can actually confess it like that. You know, unless God, God, the Father, you know, the Father reveals it to you, you know. But, I mean. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, maybe I, uh, I don't know if I'm overthinking it, but I've never, uh, I've always wondered about that. And I, I imagine most people haven't asked the question. I just thought maybe it had give me an insight that I hadn't thought of. Um, let me move on. The next verse is um, 14 in the KJV. It says, now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. So we have him saying it's not his time. Uh, he's not going to go. And then he secretly goes. And, and now, instead of being in secret, he goes right out in public uh, in the temple and teaches. And the Jews marvel, saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? <laughs> uh, okay, let me just look at those two verses there. Verse 14 and 15. Brother Jerry, what do you say about that? <laughs> you know what? That's interesting, too. It's like it says the, they, they presume that he didn't know letters, you know. And it's it's kind of weird because in another instance, it, sh it tells of uh, when he was in the synagogue and he opened the scriptures, you know, in the reading and it pointed to that scripture in Isaiah. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know, the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah, yeah. all that, and uh, I find that I, f I really do find that interesting. But maybe, maybe this is this is not like you know hundred percent certain. But my thinking might be that uh, maybe he didn't learn letters like you know the scribes. Maybe because you know his vocation before he was baptized was he was a carpenter. You know, so I don't know, maybe a carpenter never really had to study, you know, words and all that. But I truly do believe that Jesus did study, you know, the scriptures, but they were just presuming that he didn't. Just like, you know, nowadays you have men who don't have credentials, you know, they don't have a degree from a seminary or all that and all that. But if they're given the doctrine by the Lord, you know, and taught by the Holy Ghost, you know, the doctrines that they speak can make men marvel who just presumed that, you know, this man could not possibly have this kind of knowledge, you know, because it's not his 
his specialty, I guess. <laughs> you know, he's just a regular man. And I think that just shows us something else about Jesus, you know. Outwardly, he was just, he just looked like a man. He was just a man, you know. And uh, as a humble servant, you know. Yeah, okay. That's very interesting thoughts. Uh, uh, that I, obviously, you did point out that he was able to read the scriptures when he said, today this has been fulfilled. And, and uh, uh, so he read. And we know that he also wrote. The only, the only time we ever, uh, there's an example of him, we know that he wrote was when he wrote in the dirt when the uh, prostitute was about to be stoned. Uh, so he, we sh he shows that he read that in your example. He, he can write and read. But now, was he taught that in an educational system? Maybe he wasn't because maybe they just assumed he didn't know how to read and write and hadn't studied because he came from a, a, a level of society that was normally not uh, educated. But on the other hand, I, I know that uh, it was very common for all the Jewish people to to read, read scriptures and uh, be very knowledgeable in the scriptures. So I, I'm not really sure how to explain this, that they, they say that he, how is it phrased again? Let me, let me read it. Um, and the Jews marvel saying, how knoweth this man letters having never learned? So I don't know how, why they make that statement. Let me read it in the Amplified, see if it helps at all. Uh, verse 14 and 15, when the feast was already half over, Jesus went up into the temple court and began to teach. Then the Jews were perplexed. They, they said, how did this man become learned, so versed in the scriptures and theology, without formal training? Okay, so if they are correct in their interpretation of that or they're ex uh, expounding on that, then that's their viewpoint of how to explain it. So... Brother Jerry? Yeah, and you know, I think I'd agree. I think I'd agree, because that thought did come to me, you know. He wasn't a scholar. You know, he was a regular carpenter. You know, and remember in Acts, that's what they said about the, uh, the apostles, too, when they heard them preaching, you know, the marvelous works of God. And they're like, these guys ain't, they're not learned, you know. But, um, and also, Brother Luke, I would also remind, you know, be remind, I am also reminded that the Jews at this time, you know, were pretty much, they had been scattered, you know, they, the state they were in is not like the state they were in under King David, you know what I mean, after having been driven to Babylon and being underneath uh, foreign authority all that time. It seems to me that at Jesus' time, that you had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and the lawyers who were devoted and who made a living out of just studying the Bible you know, the scriptures all day, every day. But they knew Jesus to be one, a man, you know, that wasn't like that at all. And so I would say they were astonished, you know, at his teaching because he was bringing, you know, the deep things out of God's word, which they presumed that a man could not do unless he was one of those, you know, clergy type things. <laughs> you know, that's my thought on it. Take it for what it's worth. You know? All right. Well, this is an example of, uh, you know, I, I, I've studied for 29 years, and I'm sure you've studied for a long time, and, and uh, uh, not only the scriptures, but many extra-biblical uh, writings to try to help me understand things. And, and uh, it's, it's quite often I come to verses, I just, uh, I, I, last night I did, uh, the study was on Proverbs, I'm, I think I'm on chapter 26 somewhere in Proverbs now. Uh, but there's a lot of verses in Proverbs that are perplexing to me. And, I, and I'm talking about especially in the KJV, even though I'm a KJV firstist, that's why I sometimes we'll go to the Amplified or something else to help me understand it. But I don't claim to understand every verse in the Bible. <laughs> but I do understand what's really, really important and uh that leads us to, it's the hour's almost up. I try to do these studies just for an hour each night. And I, I always reserve a little bit of time at the end to tell people the good news. So I'm going to do that briefly, and, uh, and then I'll get your response to that. And, 
uh, it doesn't take long to tell people how to get saved. I, I sometimes I pe see people post a video how to get saved, and the video is two hours long. And I'm thinking there's something wrong with that. It, if you it takes two hours to teach someone how to get saved. Uh, first of all, saved means you're 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 saved from condemnation in the second death in the lake of fire. That's what you're saved from, uh, and instead. Uh, you get to go to heaven and have eternal life. So this is the question. Do you want to go to heaven? Uh, if so, do you know what you need to do? What must you do so you get to go to heaven? Um, and that's the question. Most people if they, in the world today, even among church members all over the world, uh, if they're asked, do you think you're going to go to heaven and why? Most of them are going to answer it based upon uh, their own righteousness. They say, well, I... Uh, I, I think I'm going to go to heaven, or I hope so, and it's because I am a good person. I, I do go to church, and I, I, I'm religious, and I, I, I do all these good things, and, and I, I got my fingers crossed hoping that it'll be good enough. And that's, that's the philosophy in general of the world today and throughout history. It's the philosophy that if we're good enough, God will accept us into heaven. If you're not good enough, you don't make it to heaven, you'll go to hell. But the Bible says that's that's a lie. That's from the devil. The the true uh, means of of heaven, the way to get to heaven, is Jesus said, "I'm the way." In Romans ten three, it says they seek to establish their own righteousness, uh, but that's not God's way. God's way is is receiving righteousness through Jesus Christ. And so, what I want the viewers to understand now is that uh, you it's impossible for you to get to heaven through personal merit because the standard you're going to be judged by is perfection. You'd, you'd have to be able to go before God and plead your case and say, I'm perfect. I've, I've never done one thing wrong my entire life. And uh, if, if you can admit that you cannot claim that you're perfect, then maybe you can understand your need for a savior. And Jesus said he is the savior. There's only one. He's the way, he's the truth you need to believe in. Uh, and, and he's the life. He's the only source of life everlasting in heaven. So what I want you to do is reject the philosophy of the world that set, tells you if you're just good enough, God will let get you into heaven. Reject that. Change your mind about that. And instead, don't put your faith in yourself. Put your faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, I want you to know who he is and what he did for you, though. The Bible says that he is eternal God Almighty. Uh, he was manifest in the flesh. Uh, he came down from heaven, became a man named Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus said the reason he came down from heaven was to give his life as a ransom. A ransom is a payment made to set us free, uh, set us free from condemnation. And so he did give his life. He died on a cross, and his uh, suffering and shed blood and death on that cross served as a full payment for our sins. The scripture says he's the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation means it's paid in full. It's finished. He's done everything that's required so that you get to go to heaven. And uh, uh, what you need to do next, though, is believe he paid for your sins, believe that he's your savior, and rely on him to get you to heaven instead of trusting yourself. Uh, now, but there's, I got good news. There is there is evidence and there's proof than a sign that Jesus gave us so that you can have confidence in him. And that's what we talked about earlier, his death, burial, and resurrection. He said that he would die and be buried and he raised himself to life to prove his claims were true. And sure enough, after three days in the tomb, he raised himself to life and he, he, he walked among 500 witnesses bodily for 40 days. They saw him. They talked to him, they ate with him, they touched him. And this bodily resurrection is the sign that Jesus gave us the proof that he is God. He is our savior. He is the sole source of eternal life. And he promises resurrection and eternal life for us in heaven if we'll trust him. The gospel, it's a Greek word, and it just means good news. The good news is simply that Jesus is offering you eternal life in heaven as a free gift says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but that's based on our faith in Jesus. So if you put your faith in Jesus right now, you can be certain you're going to heaven. 
because Jesus promises he'll take us to heaven if we'll trust him. And because he's God, he can't break a promise. So uh, I'm confident. I, I'm guaranteed I'm going to heaven because I'm trusting Jesus as my savior. I hope you'll put your faith in him too. And um, uh, I'll let uh, Brother Jerry make any final comment he wants. Uh, I appreciate you joining me tonight. Uh, Brother Jerry, you're welcome to join me in the, in the future if you like. And any final remarks from you before I close the study? Oh, hey, brother. Uh, I'll just say uh, thank you for having me again. And uh, yeah, I look forward to look forward to reading the Bible with you, man. That's, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, just some verses you know, that come to mind when you're saying all that. And I agree with you. And uh, say amen to what you said. It says, um, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. And then at the end of this book it says, And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So yeah, amen, brother. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to close the live broadcast, and then I'll talk to you uh, private time uh, bef before we say goodnight. Um, join me nightly uh, for these broadcasts, 7 p.m. Pacific time, for the next episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.